Jim, how does the Fernando Tatis Jr. potential, you know, the extension that he signed, the 14-year deal, how might that affect a potential deal between the Mets and Lindor? Well, unfortunately for the Mets, it pushed the number up, you know, and, and I'll tell you why. First off, Lindor is a better player than Tatis. You know, Tatis is just on the scene. He's got about a, a combined one year of, of at-bats. It's been very good. But Lindor is ahead of him on the, on the depth chart when it comes to uh, shortstops. And so, you know, when you get an, a deal, and, and, you know, it's interesting because the $340 million for Tatis includes his arbitration years. There's only one year left before free agency for Lindor. So you have to back out a little bit and see what Tatis's numbers are in free agency. And it comes to roughly nine years at around $313 million. So the number for Lindor is going to have to be above that if you want to uh, buy him out of free agency. Now, it's not as high as Mookie Betts, who signed last year. Uh, by the way, he didn't become a free agent, but he signed a 12-year deal for 365. So you're starting to see the parameters, but the longer you wait, the, the risk is that somebody else might sign too. Trevor Story is going to be a free agent at the end of the year. So there's a little bit of, of that going on too. Now, listen, the Mets can can wait, and there's a, a number of shortstops that we've said this many times that are out there, free agency at the end of the year. Not only Story, Correa, but Carlos Correa may end up signing. There's been a lot of talk about him potentially signing with Houston. So you're starting to see those numbers, and you're starting to run out a little bit of time, too.